Thank you for the introduction. My name is Maximilian Schrapel. I'm a researcher from the University of Hanover, and together with Max Ludwig Stadler and Michael Roos, who's also here, we developed a novel digital pen called Pentelligence, which combines pen tip motion and writing sounds for handwritten digit recognition. For the introduction, I would like to show some digital pens which we can find on the market. First of all, the well-known Inotra LiveScribe pen, which basically just has a printed micro dot pattern on a piece of paper, and it simply recognizes strokes with an inbuilt camera in the digital pen. And another principle we can find is, for instance, by the Wacom Inkling, which uses a base station clipped on a piece of paper and in line of sight with a digital pen, it can also recognize strokes. But what if, you, what if we just have some sudden inspiration that comes up to our mind? We may want to write down some small information on a piece of paper, which could be a telephone number or something. And when you take that case, you can see that special paper is made not available, and clipping a base station on a small piece of paper is made too uncomfortable. And that's why researchers recently focused on applying other sensors, such as motion. Uh, Wang showed in 2010 that he can achieve on handwritten digits with given writing instructions accuracies of over 94%. And for audio, we have also seen results previously in 2009 by Sinuik. He showed on his own handwriting that uh, he can achieve accuracies of 70% on audio data from a microphone just simply taped on a pen shaft. And our idea was, what we wanted to do was combining both techniques to achieve higher recognition rates. We wanted to see if there are complementary features which can be added. And so this brought us up to our vision of intelligence, which was basically that we do not want to introduce the writer to some writing instructions. We just wanted to let them write how they do it in a more natural way and then still recognize single digits at high accuracies. So, and as we can see, there are a lot of challenges we had to accomplish. So, the first one was actually the prototype. What we needed was a digital pen with nearly the same look and feel as ordinary pens. And we achieved that by a small weight, diameter, and size. I also brought my prototype with me and just the normal pen. You can see that there's nearly no difference between them. So from the inner side, we first have a USB transmission. We have shown the USB transmission because we wanted to simply uh, delete potential problems with wireless transmissions in the first step. So then we have our microcontroller, which just gathers all the sensor data and sends them further to the PC. Of course, our microphone with an amplifier and an inertial measuring unit, which basically consists just uh, of an accelerometer and gyroscope. And the last problem we had was, how do we separate single digits? Of course, we could have observed the audio channel and see if we can separate their, the audio data. But what we thought is, if we just lay down the pen on a table, it makes a click sound, sound, and this would lead to false input. So we decided to develop our own binary write information sensor, which just closes a contact every time the pen tip touches the surface. And then we looked at the audio data we hear now hopefully. So as we hear from outside of the housing, we st still can hear two strokes. So there are also approaches which uh, show that we can use uh, these audio signals for handwriting recognition. And when we hear from the inside, it's nearly the same. The noise is a bit uh, not small, but uh, here we slowed it down and it's a bit louder you still can hear two strokes. So, and we wanted to know how do we process our audio data because audio can be very noisy. 
And what we found in the literature was that Lee stated in 2004 to use envelopes of sound for handwriting, uh, for handwriting authentication. And uh, w he said that there are some surface-related features in the audio signals which should be deleted by simply putting an envelope over the audio data. And we compared his approach to others such as the raw audio data and fast Fourier transformations. And it really turns out that single digits have highest dissimilarities between others when we apply envelopes. And then we wanted to process these data for neural networks. And that came to the next problem. We wanted, we wanted to use uh, neural networks. And we decided to use 3,500 input neurons because this is related to the sampling rate of the pen. And then we stretch our envelope down to the network and process it through four in layers with an decreasing structure. And for motion, we are also doing quite the same approach. We simply downsample the incoming data to 150 neurons for each axis and then also take the right information sensor and process them through our neural networks with three in layers and a decreasing structure. And of course we had to evaluate our approach. And so we conducted a user study with 26 volunteers where three were left-handed. And we took 21 of them who gave around about 6,000 samples and then trained our networks. And to evaluate our approach, we used uh, five completely new people and five who conducted the study twice on another day to give also samples for the test set, just to see uh, if the writings are known, would the neural networks perform better or what would happen. So the next thing was also wanted to see, can we individualize our classifiers for one participant? So. One participant gave us about 2,200 samples. And then we took a look at our handwritings we observed. And we can see that handwriting can be really challenging, even in case of digits. As we see here, a four can be written as a W or a U by a single person. And even some symbols are very similar to, uh, or similar to other digits, as we see here in the six. The six could be also a zero. And this is also clear that the accuracies on all users are not that high. But what was interesting is that if we apply all sensors in one neural network, the accuracies do not increase. And this is because uh, audio is a very, very noisy sensor. And we can also see here a lot of confusion. And then we looked at our participants. And as we see here in the users one to five, were previously known to the classifiers. And so if we knew a handwriting already, the accuracies would increase. But if they are completely new, the accuracies decreases below 80%. And, and well, what was also interesting is that user nine is the only who was left-handed. And he's the only one where audio performs slightly better than motion. And this is mainly because when you hold a ran pen with the right side, it's different to the left side. So that's a problem with motion data. And of course, we wanted to observe, can we individualize our approach? And yeah, it turns out that uh, we achieve nearly the same recognition rates as we have seen them before in the literature. And for audio, we can achieve close to 90%. But one question remains. How do we combine our motion and audio? So we have seen that both sensors together in one network, one network do not perform very well. So what we propose is we revalidate the outcome. So we take a closer look at the confusions. As we can see here between six and zero, there's a high confusion. And this is, as I told before, basically because of the single uh, of the different and really quite similar writing trajectories, which are also writer dependent. So there could be also some other confusions. 
But when we look at the audio data, what was very interesting is that we can not observe any confusions in that direction. So here's our propose. We sense our input signal and processes through our own motion networks. And the outcome could be, for instance, a one or a two with a very high accuracy on the motion data. Then we just say, okay, the result is valid. But what if we sense a six? What we do then is we also process the input through our audio networks and see the result. Of course, audio has more confusion, so it could be any symbol or a six. Then we say the result was valid. But if audio says it's a zero, then we change the result. And this can also be done for other digits. Uh, we also seen on digits three and nine, which also have quite similar trajectories that, um, yeah, that uh, this could be done. So if there would be complementary features, the accuracies would also increase and there would be less confusion. And what was also interesting on that approach is audio is very noisy. When we see at conferences, ambient noise is a problem. So if we observe much um, ambient noise, we simply can switch off the audio classifiers and say, okay, just fall back on motion data. So, and the next thing was wanted to see how do they perform now on a single writer and it turns out that we can achieve up to 98 percent which is very high and very accurate but why do we need such a high accuracy that's basically because when we for instance want to write down a telephone number we want to write it down truly so we want to achieve real recognitions and then this also brings me to the last slide and for the end I would like to say that we have seen now the design of a digital pen with audio and motion data which can be combined for handwritten digit recognition and achieve very high recognition rates and our propose is if you use motion and audio data we should take them together and see uh, and we should take them together but not in one neural network or something we should process them separately and of course the avenues of research are now quite a lot so we could observe some kind of handwritings as well as handwriting authentication and there are a lot of fields we want to explore with that device. So that's my talk. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Hi, Edward Lank, University of Waterloo. Um, so I was looking at your uh, confusion between zero and six and the idea of using sort of complementary signals in order to uh, eliminate that confusion. Um, if, you, if you look at the shape of zero and six, a lot of times the reason the confusion happens is because these things, when people handwrite them, can actually bleed into each other. And so the confusion is actually a natural function of a formation. So I'm wondering if you experimented with that at all, because my intuition, based on a lot of experience in this domain, is that that probably wouldn't work out for you. So uh, actually, we didn't observe that i don't think so so uh what was the right question i i didn't get the point so uh, the, one of the challenges when you've got yeah. confusion between two symbols is because the signal from the symbol is similar if you think yeah. about someone drawing a zero in a sloppy way or a six in yeah. a sloppy way they can essentially draw the same thing and the distinction between them becomes arbitrary when you've got handwritten input um and so I'm just curious if you tried the cleanup of classification using the two-stage classifier. Did you try that or was it just an idea? No, we, we tried that. That, that uh, would, the, these are the results. 
So we also tried that on real handwritings and on a single writer and these are the accuracies we can achieve. So I don't know if that would answer your question, but <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, okay. Uh, I have one question, like, uh, can you a little bit elaborate about the neural network, how many layers and what about like? Yeah, so we used four hidden layers yeah. um, for the audio classifier with an decreasing structure and we started with 3,500 neurons. The next layer had also 3,500 neurons and then about 2,100 and then 1,000 and Basically, that structure, we, we tried a lot of different structures, and by trial and error, this turned out to achieve the best results. So, it, but that's also, uh, we also have just a small data set, and we believe that if we would have a much bigger data set, we also would change our networks. So, we also tried other approaches. Yeah, so I, I'm interested on uh, seeing the error rates of each layer kind of thing. So later we can talk because. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's again thank Maximilian.